All right, so I'm back in a location that I shot at um, late last year. This was one of the first, actually one of the first photos that I took once I got back into landscape photography, and it's these three beautiful hills, or folds in the hill, with a tree perched on top and another one just on another fold further away. Um, it's a very different time of year. The grass here is very gray now. It's very, um, very dry. Uh, it was lush green back then, so I'll come back and shoot it again. But when I shot it last time, I shot it handheld. I just jumped out of the car with this lens, the Canon 100-400 USM2 L lens. Uh, but I was hand-holding. Shutter speed was probably a bit low. The, the shot is not really 100% sharp. It's a little bit soft. Um, so I wanted to shoot it again properly on a tripod, shoot at f16, nice and steady, and get everything in focus. My boy has come along with me to hang out. He's a good lad. I oh, usually just hit him with something heavy and blunt and then he stops moaning. Oh, we what? Let's see what that looks like and just focus on this tree in the distant background that's got a nice glow behind it now as the sun backlights it. Yeah, I think I think the sun needs to be further around to the left to really do these hills justice. Mind you, the sun is also about to poke down behind some cloud and I think that might cook our goose. Yeah, the light is dipping below the clouds now. So that's, uh, that's going to screw us up a little bit. We'll have to see. Well, there goes the sun, huh? But there is a gap below those clouds. All right, the sun has dipped behind a cloud. So we wait to see if it emerges. We've got donuts in the car waiting for us. <laughs> Probably be melted right now. Can't be melted, it's cold man. How are they going to melt in the cold? You can see the light's starting to hit my face again. The light's coming out. Stop moving cow. a boy. Uh, the sun's coming out but it's not topping the, um, hitting the tops of those hills. All we got is a little bit of glow over here. I'll uh, film again with my R5 to show you what I'm talking about. Focus. Still getting used to using this as both a film and a stills camera. So the sun's poked out, but it's not kissing the folds in this hill because I think it's a bit too low now. So all I'm going to do is fire for a few more shots with this glow, and then I think we're going to nick off. All right, let's take another shot. There's barely anything. Ah uh, yes, but see Sonny, when you put a shot into Lightroom then you can you can play with the light and shadow, you can play with the contrast and the clarity and all sorts of wonderful things. And what might have been an ordinary photo can suddenly be a really nice photo. I mean, that photo shoot you and I did at the boulder field, remember that? It was crap and then right at the very end we got an awesome photo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So. The rule of thumb is, it's not over till the fat middle-aged man sings. I need to knock back the exposure here for the highlights. So I'm going to take another shot. Easier to pull the details out of the shadows than try and rescue an area which is blown out. Because once it's blown out, that's it. It's cooked. Think of it as, uh, as burning something. If you, if you cook something and it's not quite cooked well enough, you can always cook it a little bit more. If you cook it to the point where it catches fire, it doesn't matter what you do, you're not going to bring that thing back. And it's the same with photographs. If you overcook it, if you overexpose your highlights, you, there's no way to bring them back. You've already set them on fire. You've already burned them. They're gone. But the shadows, they're undercooked but you can cook them a bit more in Lightroom or Photoshop. That's the secret. Oh, actually those clouds. I think so, that. And then I can blend them together in Photoshop or Lightroom and see if I can get a nice mix between the really bright sky and the very subdued mid-ground. We'll see how we go with that. But, you know, like I always say, whether you get a shot or not, it's completely irrelevant. Yes, we all want to get nice photos, but the whole point is just to get out. Listen to the crickets. Feel the fresh air on your skin. And get annoyed by your son. And get annoyed by your son. I mean, who wouldn't want that? I know, right? Hey, son, why don't you go and play in traffic? 
There's a road up there. All right. <laughs> See what happens if you lay down in the middle of it. See if people stop quickly enough. That'll be an interesting experiment. Oh, yeah. It's not dangerous at all. No, we should definitely try that. Yeah, we'll try it together. So I'm just going to have one last sweep around here. Just have a bit of a look. You know, get used to doing this. This is why a smooth pano head like this um, really right stuff. I sound like I'm an ad for really right stuff. You know, I, I don't have any affiliate links with them. I'm not sponsored by them. But, <clears throat> well, obviously I'm not sponsored by anyone because I'm a nobody on YouTube at the moment. But this ball head really is awesome. You know, it's it's so nice to spend your money once and have something that'll last that it won't just last, which means it'll save you money, but it's a pleasure every time you roll it out and use it. And that's the beauty of buying good quality stuff. It not only saves you money in the long term, but you get pleasure every time you use it. As my old man said, you buy cheap, you buy twice. Or in my case, when I was younger, maybe five times before you learn your lesson. But I have well and truly learned my lesson. And this piece of equipment is glorious. Like. All right, Sonny, I think I think that is it for us. Okay. Every time I say that, though, I go, oh, but I'll just have a look. There, there might be one more shot. <laughs> there's always just, there's just one more shot. All right, I think we're going to call it. <clears throat> so, what have we learned today? We've learned that you don't need to go far away from home to get great photos. All you need to do is just drive around, preferably have a long lens attached to your camera, something like this, or a 24 to 105, or a 70 to 210, 70 to 200. Something with a little bit of reach, something with a bit of pull. And just find a spot and look around and zoom in on different elements because, like I've said before, it usually isn't the whole vista that attracted you to a scene in the first place. It's individual elements. I mean, in this case, it's uh, the folds in the hill. It's a couple of trees on the horizon. It's two little bodies of water down there in the valley. It's individual things like that. And that's what attracts your attention to the scene in the first place. So, you know, photograph those. Zoom in on those and photograph those and make minimalist landscape shots out of those things so that's the first thing is you don't need to go far from home to get nice landscape photos just get in tight on your subject second thing is <clears throat> if you're photographing at dusk or at dawn and you've got bright sky dark foreground yes you can use a drop down ND filter um, I probably should be using it although I don't have a holder for this uh, 100 to 400 and if you're zooming in really tight it's not going to work that well anyway um, but, you know, take a couple of shots. Either take a couple of shots, one that's exposed for the bright areas and one that's exposed for the darker areas, and then blend them together in Photoshop or Lightroom. Or, if you're going to have to choose between the two, expose more for the highlights, because once you've burned them out, you can't recover them. It's like setting something on fire. Once it's on fire, you can't bring it back. But if something is undercooked, you can cook it a little bit more. And so you cook your image a bit more in Photoshop or Lightroom. And the third thing is, Slow down and enjoy it, you know, just take your time, listen to the crickets, enjoy the sunset. If you get a photo, great. If you don't, doesn't matter, you know. In a hundred years, who's going to care? In a hundred minutes, who's going to care? It's not important. Slowing down, enjoying your life, enjoying the outdoors, that's what matters. Yours is pretty nice. Yeah. Your mum's pretty nice. My mum is your wife. Oh. That would explain it. <laughs> Are you enjoying your donut? Yeah. Let me have another bite of yours. Why do you have to keep biting mine for? Yours is good. Mmm. I didn't get the light I was hoping for, but that's fine, really. I'll come back a bit later in the season when the sun's arc is a bit further around and it kisses the tops of those hills. And besides, this photo that I took earlier of the two little dams down in the valley, when the sun was still kissing the hill in the foreground, I think looks rather nice, especially the mixture of warm and cool tones. Likewise, this blended shot, which I took right towards the end, when I exposed two exposures, one after the other, one for the sky, and one for the foreground, I think has a nice combination of cool tones and warm tones. If you like this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing. That's it for this week. See ya.